Okay, if you've been waiting for a Vast 5, it's here. Simply download the installer, double click and run, and allow it to extract the setup files. You have the option to participate in the Avast community and you can also perform a custom installation. Click next. You have the option to install the Google Chrome web browser. Again click next. It will create a system restore point which will take a few minutes and then the installer will start to install the program. Now I've skipped a bit here and it's finishing the setup. And it's fairly quick. On your desktop you'll have this little icon and in your system tray you'll have a little orange ball which will spin when it's active. Now double click either one of them to open the program interface. The first thing you want to do is register. Click on register now, it will retrieve the information, fill out these details and submit them. And you'll get a little pop-up to say the registration has been accepted and that's it. It's valid for 12 months. Now the next thing you want to do is go to settings. Now if you click on basic, you have show a vast tray icon, animate the icon when scanning. You can use special graphic effects if you like, but this will slow your scanning down. You can show special scans in the Avast user interface. Tick that box. Updates, automatic updates and program updates. It'll ask when an update is available. Update parameters. Tick which box applies to you. Details. For update options, ask for a reboot when needed. Show notification and show notification on automatic updates and errors. It updates every 240 minutes. Proxy settings. You can use auto detect if you use a proxy or you can enter the specific proxy details yourself. The virus chest is preset to 256 megabytes. Virus alerts. You can notify other users via email. You can also exclude drives simply by browsing and adding drives to the exclusion list. You can password protect Avast, which if you're on a multi-user machine, you may want to protect it. And you can protect all of the areas, and that's entirely up to you. Silent and gaming mode. Now if you tick the silent or gaming mode, you will get no alerts or pop-ups whatsoever. Uh, Pre-ticked is silent if a full, full screen application is running and the messages will be suppressed. Status bar, these boxes are all ticked and you can leave those as they are. Language, the default language at the moment on mine is English. If you wish to install additional languages, tick the box, click OK and it will install it. You can enable Avast, Avast sounds, these are pre-ticked and if you don't want them, untick them. Maintenance, delete scan logs older than 30 days and delete temporary scan logs older than one day. Community, you have the option again to participate in the Avast community, it's entirely your choice. And troubleshooting, enable rootkit scan on system startup, this is pre-ticked. Enable raw disk access during Avast boot time scan is pre-ticked. You can skip checking of digital signatures and you enable Avast self-defense module is pre-ticked. Load of vast services only after loading system services. You don't really want to do that. Redirect settings. You can use these to troubleshoot any network problems you may have. So we'll come out of this window. And just move that over. And we'll click on scan computer. Now if we click on quick scan, the first thing to do is turn on. And then you want to go into the settings. Now when a virus is found, you have to go through and select the options. So I would select repair, move to chest and third action delete. For potentially unwanted programs again repair, move to chest and third action delete. Suspicious files, I will use repair, move to chest and move to chest because it may be a false positive. So that will be my backup action. Performance, scan priority is normal, you can higher it or lower it, you can speed up scanning by using the persistent cache and you can store data about scanned files in the persistent cache but this will slow down your scan times. You can generate a text file with a report and you can also select the items you want included in that report. You can exclude files, folders, drives or whatever. I will put in drive D and E here. I ticked the wrong ones there but never mind. You can schedule the scans. Now you can do this for once, daily, weekly or monthly. Uh, 
Don't start the scan if running on batteries and pause the scan if battery mode begins. Wake up the system to start the scan if it's in sleep mode and shut down the system after the scan finishes. Now if you're going to schedule it, use a military clock, so I reset this for 1800 hours which is 6pm on a Sunday. Uh, click on less details to minimize that. Full system scan, again you need to turn this on and go through the settings in the same way. Removable media, if you use USB devices you need to turn this on. And again, set the actions for viruses, PUPs and suspicious files. Now if you come down to select folder to scan, you can select specific folders. Scan from Windows Explorer, again turn this one on and this gives you the right click context menu. So you can just right click an item on your desktop and scan it. And the scan parameters, all packers will be scanned and it's nice simple and easy. It's very simple to use. Now if you go to the screensaver scan, this will scan all hard drives and screens, click on screensaver you can scan all files uh, if you click on the screensaver if you're using Windows XP, Windows 7 whatever it will show you the underlying screensaver it will use code emulation on the speeds you can pick your packers and if you have some that aren't ticked here then tick them Actions, again, you have to go through virus, PUP and suspicious and select the action for them. The scan priority, you can pretty much leave as it is. Um, once you've done the basic settings, it's nice, simple and easy. You can set up a boot time scan, which you just simply click schedule and once it's done, it's done. You need to reboot for this to take effect. I'll unschedule that for the time being. Scan logs. I did a scan earlier and as you can see no virus was found. Now, file system shield. This will scan documents and files when opening and writing. Expert settings. You can pretty much leave all of these settings as they are. And the same applies with mail settings. It scans inbound, outbound and newsgroup messages. And you can change some of the settings if you like. You can customize it to suit yourself. In most cases, most of you will just leave it as it is. The web shield, this will scan whilst you're surfing and it's ideal. You can go on to expert settings, you have enable web scanning and use intelligent stream scanning, scan all files, P2P shield. There are no basic settings, if you click on expert settings you find that they are all pre-ticked and again these are preset with actions to be taken which were done through the settings earlier. Instant messengers now this lists all of the instant messengers if you use any instant messengers leave it as it is. Network shield now using this if there are no settings for it it is preset and behavior shield again that has no settings it's preset and these are things that block malware and infections from entering your computer. If you click on maintenance you can update the engine and virus definitions and if there's an update to the program there'll be a little notice down here just click update program and you may be prompted to reboot. It's very simple and easy to use and the only thing you have to do is supply a valid email address and activate it if you want more information check out my site which is free PC security and you can find it at freepcsecurity.co.uk